Hi everybody, in this video, we're going to learn about the rule of three in C++. Specifically, we're gonna learn what the rule of three is, why it's important, and how you can apply it to your C++ code. But before we just jump into code, like always, let's look at the definition of the rule of three. The rule of three states that if a class defines any of the following special member functions, a destructor, a copy constructor, or a copy assignment operator, then it should define all three of them. Basically, the rule of three is a guideline or best practice for how you should write classes that manage external resources, such as dynamically allocated memory. You want to be able to manage these external resources safely. And in order to do that, you follow the rule of three. So now let's take a look at a simple example of, of a C++ class that violates the rule of three. So here we have a class called rule of three, which has a pointer member called mData that points to dynamically allocated memory. In this class, we have defined a destructor to free this memory when the object is destroyed. But we haven't defined a copy constructor or a copy assignment operator, which means that this class violates the rule of three. So let's see what does that actually mean when we violate the rule of three? Well, in order to see that example, let's look down at our main function. So in our main function, we're defining two instances of our rule of three class. We are defining object one. And when we define object one, after that, we set object one's value to 42. Then we define object two and say that object two is equal to object one. And after setting object two equal to object one, we're gonna set the value of object one to 10. So if you look at this, on the surface, you may think, okay, object one's value is 10, and object's two value should not be 10, it should be 42. So let's see what happens. So after compiling this code and then running it, we actually see that object one's value is 10, as expected, and object two's value is also 10. And that's because the default copy constructor, where we're saying object two is equal to object one, performs a shallow copy. So in this case, it's simply copying the value of the, the pointer member variable mData and setting mData equal to that mData. In that case, then object one and objects two's mData points to the same block of dynamically allocated memory. And in order to fix this issue, we have to follow the rule of three and we need to define a copy constructor so that we can make a deep copy of the dynamically allocated memory. So let's look at how we would do that in this example. So go back up to here and the copy constructor in this example would be this. So in this case, we're saying that if we're making a copy of another object, we're going to take in the reference of that object. So in this case, when we're saying rule three, object two equals object one, object ones will come in as this parameter. And then the M data of object two will equal a new pointer object ones M data's value. So we're defining a new block of dynamically allocated memory and M data will point to that new block. So let's see if this works. Let's see if object one is 10 and object two is 42. And that worked. But remember the rule of three needs to have a destructor, a copy constructor, and also a copy assignment operator. So when would we use a copy assignment operator? We see where the copy constructor is important, but when does a copy assignment operator matter? 
a copy assignment operator is used when an object is already defined and then it gets updated using the, another object. So in this case, we make another object and define it rule of three and call it object three. And then object three has been initialized. Now, when we set object three equal to object one, in this case, we actually are gonna be using a copy assignment operator, which hasn't been defined. So let's see what happens when we don't define the copy assignment operator. Let's say now that we want to update object one value to 15. So what is the value of object one, object two, and object three after we do this? Well, let's find out. I'm gonna take this code here and access object three. If we look at this, what we would want object one's value to be is 15. And object two, we would want it to be 42. And for object three, it should be 10. And you can see here, object one is 15, object two is 42, but object three is 15. And that's because we did not define a copy assignment operator. So it's using the default copy assignment operator, which does a shallow copy, not a deep copy like we would want. So in this case, object three's M data, the, the pointer has been updated to point to object one's M data memory address. So it's now pointing to object one's dynamically allocated memory block, not what object three's M data was supposed to be. So let's define the copy assignment operator. So this would be the copy assignment operator for the rule of three class that we have here. So we're saying that when we're using the operator, the equal to sign, this is the copy assignment operator that we would use. So this refers to, in the example that we did below, object three. So object three and the parameter that we're passing in the other in this example that we did was object one. So if this does not equal the other, which means we're not saying object three equals object three or object one equals object one, then we're going to set the value of M data equal to the value of our others M data. So in this case, we're going to say object three's M data value will equal object one's M data value. So instead of updating M data's pointer to refer to the memory block of object one, we're now updating the value of object three's M data to be the value of object one's M data. And then finally, we return back this updated object. So now let's see if this works. And there it is. We have object one is 15, object two is 42, and object three stood at 10. So now you can see you're handling everything properly. The rule of three is important to ensure that your code behaves correctly when you're dealing with dynamically allocated memory and objects that are copied or assigned to each other. So, but defining all three of these special member functions, the destructor, the copy constructor, and the copy assignment operator, we can ensure that our objects are properly cleaned up and that the copies of our objects are independent of each other. And therefore, our objects aren't pointing to a block of memory that another object is already using. Everything is independent. Now, in addition to the rule of three, there's also something called the rule of five in C++. And that applies when you're dealing with move semantics. It involves defining a move constructor 
and a move assignment operator in addition to these three member functions that we've already have defined. I'm not going to go into detail of the rule of five in this video, but it's important to be aware of it when you're dealing with C++ code and move semantics. So I hope this video helped you understand the rule of three a little bit more and to understand that the rule of three is an important concept when writing C++ code that deals with dynamically allocated memory and objects that are copied or assigned to each other. So by following the rule of three and defining all those special member functions, we can ensure that our code behaves correctly and avoids common pitfalls. So if you liked what you saw, please remember to subscribe to my channel so you can get notified of other programming tutorial videos. And this video actually was requested. So if there is something that you would like to learn about, either with C++ or with other software engineering or programming practices, please feel free to leave a comment and suggest what you would like to see. And until next time, happy learning.